Welcome to Looking at the Markets with David Modell. Today I wanted to give you a very simple moving average crossover day trading strategy. So let's take a look. Uh, right now I'm on Google Finance and I typed in Priceline. Okay, so you can type in a stock name and or symbol and it'll give you the chart. And you're going to want to make some adjustments after you get your chart. Okay, I'm going to go down and I'm going to click on settings and if it's a line chart we're going to change it to candlestick chart and the reason for that is because a line chart can get very confusing if you have two moving averages there and the current pl current price is also represented by a line you get a lot of lines there and that could be very confusing now if this works for you that's fine but for me I want to avoid the confusion so I'm going to use a candlestick chart and I'm going to put the uh, interval at two minutes so there you go I'm gonna click on two minutes and so each candlestick represents two minutes of price action today now you have two moving averages on there and so we're gonna to go to technicals and I'm gonna click on simple moving average SMA and I'm gonna make it the five period then I'm gonna click on simple moving average again for the next one SMA and put on the ten period moving average and so you've got the five period moving average and the ten period moving average simple moving average All right. And so here we have the red line is the slower, I'm sorry, the red line is the faster uh, moving average, which is the five period simple moving average. And the green line is the, sl is the slower moving average, and that's the 10 period simple moving average. And so when the red line clearly crosses above the green line, that can be a buy signal and I'm not telling you what to buy or what to sell I'm not telling you what to do you have to make your own decisions this is just an idea of what I might do for day trading okay and what's great about this method is that you can enjoy some run-ups here alright and so I like to buy when the red line the the slower I'm sorry <laughs> the faster moving average crosses above the green line the slower moving average then that could be a buy signal now it has to clearly break above it sometimes they're just kind of uh, you know overlapping each other kind of just moving together on top of each other no you want a clear break where you can see there's a little bit of space between them so when it breaks above it or crosses above it that could be a buy signal and then you can hold on to it and don't sell until it clearly crosses below it till the red line clearly crosses below the green line and then you can sell it and if you did that here you would have enjoyed this run up all right. Uh, now here we can see it's just kind of on top of each other. That's not a clear signal. All right. But here we have a clear signal. All right. Uh, it the uh, red line uh, broke above it, and then here it broke below it. So you could have bought here and sold here. You wouldn't have made much profit. Okay, but you wouldn't have lost anything either. Uh, and then here it clearly broke above it and then broke below it again and so you would have just about broken even here alright but at least you would have avoided this big down move okay and so that's a big advantage that's a huge advantage of this method is that you get to enjoy some up moves and you avoid down moves and you also avoided this big down move over here alright because before most of the down move happens the the uh, faster moving average will cross below the the slower moving average in other words the 5 will cross below the 10 usually at the very beginning of a down move and so you can you can avoid the down moves and you can enjoy the up moves um, another big advantage of this is that it is day trading and so what that means is that you must close your position at the end of the trading day no matter you know even if it's going up down sideways doesn't matter uh, close out your positions at the end of the or before the end of the trading day that way you don't have to worry about overnight gaps you don't have to worry about a big down move uh, happening overnight and so you you don't have to worry about things that uh, swing traders and long-term buy and hold investors have to worry about such as a fifty percent market crash like what happened in you know 2008 or 2001 um, you know there were big big fifty percent uh, market crashes okay you don't have to worry about that so much happening uh, it's, or it's a lot less likely to happen to you if you close your position out uh, at the end of every trading day alright 
And also, it probably won't happen to you if you follow this method exactly, because again, at the beginning of every down move, uh, you're getting out of your position, you're selling, all right, and you're not worrying about overnight gap downs either, because you're closing your position before the end of every trading day, all right. Um, and so, this is something you want to do with uh, stocks that move a lot. If you have big down moves and up moves, if it goes you know down, up, down, up. Like, like hills, like rolling hills, then you do well because you avoid the down moves and you benefit from the up moves. You don't want to do this on something that just tends to go sideways all day. Uh, because as you can see, you wouldn't have really profited uh, much from this sideways action over here. In fact, you would have run up some commission costs and not really profited much, if at all. You might have even you might have even lost a little bit of money from commission costs over here from this uh, sideways movement. Okay, you really benefit the most from the big up moves. All right, and so this is a method for underlyings. You know, in other words, stocks, ETFs, commodities, whatever, uh, currencies, commodities that have a tendency to chop up, you know, make big chops up and down, all right? And so maybe it's not so great for uh, things that go sideways, don't move much. Uh, I'm thinking of Coca-Cola, I'm thinking of General Electric, I'm thinking of utilities, stocks, things like that. They, those tend to just not have massive movements, all right? Uh, you can also do this with options. So you're going to be watching the underlying stock, and for example, uh, at this break, uh, you know, of the the break of the five above the ten, uh, you could have bought an at the money call option. You want to be really careful because uh, options, you know, the prices can move uh, very quickly, and so you want to use small position sizes, very small position sizes, small amounts of your account. Uh, for every one of these trades. And you also probably want to use a low cost broker because you're going to rack up a lot of commission costs with this method, all right? Because you're going to be doing it over and over and over. Uh, I've also noticed that the biggest moves tend not to happen in the middle of the day. Uh, Priceline's a perfect example. You'll see in the middle of the day, you get the least amount of movement. And so you may want to take a lunch break around 12 o'clock noon, <laughs> all right? Or in the middle of the trading day, whatever time that is in your time zone. Um, some people recommend avoiding the first half hour of the day. That's not a bad idea because there is a lot of unpredictability then, and so that's a thought. Uh, but that may not apply to you. It depends on the underlying. All right. Uh, the most action tends to happen, <coughs> excuse me, in the beginning of the day and toward the end, not in the middle, as we discussed already. All right. And uh, finally, you may want to use the exponential moving averages instead of the simple moving averages. Uh, because with the exponential moving average, that uh, gives more weight, more weighting in, uh, toward the uh, more recent uh, price action, as opposed to the simple moving averages, which is more of a true or uh, you know, steady moving average. It, it's, just a, it's just simple. It, you just add up the, uh, you know, the price action and then divide, all right? Whereas with the exponential, it's, it's not as true of a moving average. It gives more of a weighted average, weighted toward recent price action. And so some people swear by the exponential moving averages. The problem for me is that, notice this is the exponential moving averages, the five and the 10. Uh, notice how close the lines are together. You don't get as much of a clean break, all right? Uh, and yeah, they're so close together, it's hard to really tell what's going on, possibly. Whereas with the simple moving averages, you get a little bit of more space, a little more room between them, and so you get a cleaner break. Okay, and so they're not on top of each other as much. All right, so these are all things to think about. But if you prefer the exponential moving average, that's fine. If you want to put a little bit of space between the moving averages, so you get a cleaner break, uh, you may want to put a little more space between the numbers. For example, instead of the five and the ten, you might want to go with the five and the thirteen. For example. And as you can see, there's more space, more room between the moving averages, and so you get a cleaner break. Let's say we do the 15, you get an even cleaner break. The problem with that is you don't get as many crosses, and so you may miss some opportunities. Like for example, here, you know, you get long periods, longer periods of time without a cross. But on the other hand, that may, uh, that may reduce your commission costs because you get fewer false signals, all right? But you, you do get a cleaner break with that. Um, so if you don't want to make as many trades, 
uh, that may be the way to go. Uh, as for me, I'm fine with the 5 and the 10. Uh, I don't mind them being a little closer together. I don't mind making more trades because I'm using very low cost brokers. All right, And so these are just things for you to think about, ideas that may work for you. And there's a neat little and very simple, uh, simple moving average or exponential if you prefer, uh, crossover method for, for day trading. All right, so use a low cost broker and uh, just be very watchful. This is, you know, this day trading method, uh, unless you take a break in the middle of the day, you, you almost have to watch it all day. You have to keep tabs on it. All right, and so that's another disadvantage. It's not for people who want to step away for long periods of time from the markets. All right, so I hope this is helpful for you. And uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube and leave comments. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can receive the latest updates on my financial educational videos. Uh, and if you need more help, if you want some help putting together a trading or investing plan, or looking at moving averages or other technical indicators, you can email me at any time. My email address is davidmodell at gmail.com. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, and I'll talk to you again soon.